Welcome to Tutakaka, New Zealand, where we are house-sitting and looking after Susie the dog, exploring the amazing beaches and coastlines of Northland, and encountering some curious locals. <laughs> I'm Alison, a vet who loves cats and dogs. And this is Graham, avid fisherman and hunter-gatherer. We are pet sitters, explorers, and digital nomads. And together we make up Vet Around the World. Travelling to new places, having fun, meeting amazing animals, pets and people. Come along with us and join the adventure. This week we are in Tutakaka, on the North Island of New Zealand one of our favourite places in the world. Join us for coffee and follow our day as pet sitters, looking after Susie, a mixed breed dog who can't wait for us to finish our coffee so we can get out and explore. We also have the company of two Tonkinese cats. Sometimes they even follow us on beach adventures, but not today. After breakfast, the fishing forecast looks good. So Susie leads us down the winding path to the local beach. Well really, all she wants is for us to throw the ball so she can chase it. You may recognise this place from our Argonaut Octopus Encounter video. Most people have never seen a live Argonaut, so do check out that special episode. Link in the description below. Here we find a crystal clear stream that babbles down the rocky foreshore, meeting the mighty Pacific Ocean whose mood can vary from fierce wind-blown surges that crash against the towering cliffs, to today's gentle lapping wavelets that sparkle invitingly. Susie does not hesitate in diving in after her ball, so we continue the game of fetch, racing up and down the beach in a spray of sand she would give a greyhound a run for its money. The clamber across the rocky coastline to the prime fishing spots can be challenging, but today the tide and swell is kind to us. Graham carries a light fishing rod and soft baits. Easy to pack in your pocket for any spontaneous dog walk turned fishing opportunity. The three part rod is quickly assembled, then he simply chooses the most promising looking soft lure, i.e. whatever new shiny thing caught his eye at the tackle shop maybe. We do joke that the tackle shop is a grown man's lolly shop. A sneak peek below the surface with the GoPro does reveal a multitude of two-spot demoiselle and other bait fish. And then another curious local comes by to say hello. Moving spots seem to be the trick today. Graham pulled in one lovely kahawai, a good eating fish and excellent smoked. 
and then a pan-sized red snapper. Yes, we did measure and it was legal. Check out these feisty crabs hiding in between the rocks. Mind your fingers. <laughs> Susie keeps dropping hints, I mean her tennis ball. But we haven't figured out why she'll joyfully bound into the ocean, but jumping What's into a rock pool is another Find story. Get it. Don't get up. Get the ball. That's it. Get the ball. Go on. Get it. That's it. Get the ball. Get it. Get it. She eventually plucked up courage. Good girl, Suze. Otherwise, one of us would have had to get our feet wet. But she is very nimble on her paws. The fish were quickly filleted with a dusting of flour, salt and pepper and we pan fried them for a delicious lunch. You can't get any fresher than that. We enjoyed our meal and the view, while Susie waited on patiently, ready for the next adventure, off in the car and a road trip to explore Fananaki. We took a rural road towards Matapuri, which soon devolved into a dusty gravel trail towards Fananaki. And here, long stretches of golden sand allowed Susie a good workout at the beach, with hardly another soul in sight. Honestly, she won't stop unless we put the ball away to let her catch her breath. Back in the car for a drink and a rest, Susie. We drive past more curious locals as we attempt to follow a back road around to the Fonanaki footbridge. Yes, this road is on Google Maps, but one look at what appeared to be quicksand made us reverse back past the curious locals to take a less intrepid route. Well, relatively less intrepid. Oh, Susie, how'd you come? Come on, Susie, let's explore the longest footbridge in the Southern Hemisphere. Graham starts across the bridge, but we had a slight problem getting Susie to understand that she was supposed to stay on the bridge. Susie, come. Susie, come. Susie, come. Susie, come. Susie, come. Susie, come. Maybe she was telling us she needed to go. And then disaster strikes. Susie loses her ball off the edge of the bridge. Poor Susie. Thankfully, she continued along the bridge with us, stopping to peer hopefully for her ball every few minutes. We came across an awesome story about this footbridge, written by Lachlan, a Fonanaki school student, and we wanted to share it with you as it captures the essence of this less travelled part of New Zealand. Every morning and evening, I ride my bike across the Fonanaki footbridge to and from school. This wooden bridge is the longest footbridge in the Southern Hemisphere and it's 395 metres long. I'm always in a hurry, so I ride as fast as my bare feet can spin the pedals. As I go, I'm careful because if I get off the middle plank, I'm a goner. One terrible day I was going home sick from school and my front peg got caught. My bike flipped and I went flying. Dad had to rescue my bike because it was so jammed in the wire netting. Fortunately, this does not happen very often. 
I have been riding the bridge since I was two years old. When I was two, my nana would often take me to the library. I would ride my little balance bike and go very fast, leaving her in the distance. There was always plenty to see from the bridge. Once I saw a big grey stingray flapping through the water, so I skidded to a halt to watch this majestic fish. Sometimes the water is alive with snapper, kingfish, kahawai, harori and sprats. I often see people fishing from the bridge. I also love to sneak up behind the shags, drying their wings to see how close I can get to them before they fly. Sometimes there are kingfishers and seagulls perching on the railings. I see pied stilts, dotterels and oyster catchers foraging in the shallows. I meet trampers walking across the bridge because it is part of the Te Araroa Trail. They are always carrying huge backpacks and walking sticks, so they have to climb onto the side of the bridge so I can get past. On very hot days when we are at school, the teachers let us bomb off the bridge and into the water at lunchtime or swimming time. This is fun until you do a back flop or a belly flop. I feel proud to ride across the bridge because my great-grandfather Len Peters and another man, Wilfred Biles, built it in 1947. This meant my grandfather could walk to school instead of swimming on a horse or rowing a boat. Ever since that date, the bridge has connected the south side to the north side. I cannot imagine being without my bridge. Thanks for sharing that story, Lachlan. But Susie still cannot imagine being without her ball. Fonanaki is a small town of 300 or so residents. There is a hall and a friendly local dairy, so we treated ourselves to some ice cream. Making our way back to the car, clever Susie decided to swim across in the hope of finding her beloved ball. Go Susie! Where's your ball? Come on! But I bet we find the ball first. Where's your ball? Susie come, Susie come, Susie come, Susie come, yeah, where's your ball, where's your ball, where's your ball, where's your ball, get your ball, get your ball. Eventually we found something to drop in the water, so she looked down and got her ball, and now she wants us to come down and throw it, sorry Suze, we are stuck on the bridge. On the way back, Graham spotted a likely looking mangrove area for oysters. So it's shoes off, roll up your jeans and get muddy time. If you are not sinking up to your ankles in mud, you are not in the right place for oysters. These oysters can be found attached to trees and rocks or submerged in the mud. Slim pickings today though, so no oysters for supper. We head back to the car, wipe off our feet and towel down the dock. House sitting allows us the opportunity to slow travel. To explore the out of the way places even some locals do not know about. Will we turn left or right or why not do both? Every day is an adventure and we have some wonderful pets to share our days with. Bath time is Susie's least favourite activity 
Sorry, Suze, but it was necessary. Choco and Seal welcomed us home with cuddles and cupboard love. Is it wrong to have fish to eat twice in one day? But of course not. The fog dog beer batter is a favourite way of cooking fish. Serve with salad and tomato sauce. And if there's any beer left over, we know what to do with it at the end of a long day. But now the cats are tired and ready for bed. The end of a happy, sunny, sandy day in Tutukaka. We hope you enjoyed this adventure with us. Join us next episode in the beautiful Bay of Islands with Lily the Tonkinese. Please like and subscribe for more pet, vet and travel adventures.